So, yeah, uh, the talk is titled From IT to I'm In, um, which is a well-known hacker phrase, obviously. Um, so, uh, who am I? Um, I'm Johnny Gill. I am a penetration tester at uh, Bramford Technology Labs. So I've been doing this job now for uh, about two and a half years. Um, my other sort of... Um, things i've got a master's in distributed systems and networks which i did by distance learning um i have the oscp um i'm also an animal lover a tabletop role-playing game a board game player a musician and a runner of silly long distances um my most recent event took me 33 and a half hours to finish um uh it wasn't a 5k, although there's nothing wrong with taking 33 and a half hours to do a 5k. Um, but yes, it was a, a silly long way. Um, so again, if anybody wants to talk to me about any of those things afterwards, then uh, please do. They're things that I have a great interest in. Um, so, um, history. Growing up uh, in my house, um, so I'm 35 years old, so 1989 I was born, um, and uh, the computer that we had in the house was my dad's Amstrad word processor, uh, which he used to catalogue all of the um, things that we had taped off the telly onto VHS. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then we'd print out on the... Um, basically dot matrix printer very noisy um but i was always enamored by the green and black screen and i still am to this day um i don't have one sat in the corner that i switch on every now and then or anything like that um but yeah then we went to a windows 95 home pc um and my uh sort of main memory of that other than it having a dvd drive um so we had dvds in the house long before a lot of other people um but it could only play american region dvds um but uh yeah my main other memory was um i think i was about eight and i had a tomb raider demo um and basically it would crash and then the uh the pc would be stuck in a different um screen resolution so uh it was basically a quarter of the size of normally you would have to scroll to get to the the different areas of the screen every time it did that uh my dad would reformat the pc and reinstall windows 95 um so what i did was start learning how to use the computer better than my dad did and it's probably the first thing that i was ever aware that i had got better at than my dad um then I started uh, a college course where um, I, w I did a, a national diploma in um, software development. Um, so then I got my own PC, um, which was Windows XP Media Center. So I had a remote control, which was all very fun. Um, and then I bought myself a MacBook because I wanted to see uh, what that was all about. And the most recent thing that I have for myself is a gaming PC that I put together myself. I have a picture of the Anarchist cookbook here because when I was uh, in my early teens, somebody at school mentioned it to me. So I downloaded a copy, a PDF probably. Um, and I was just immediately drawn to the stuff about like Telnet um and everything like that that made it seem possible to connect to things that you weren't supposed to connect to i didn't do anything with that at the time but it's always just stuck in my head that that was kind of you know there were ways to do things that you kind of weren't supposed to do um so that was probably um apart from uh war games which was a, a film that my dad would put on um reasonably frequently probably my first sort of uh yeah um bit of knowledge about the world of hacking i guess um so uh here are things i have learned through so i <laughs> this is just to point out to people that sometimes um you can be better than something says to you so i only got a c in my it gcse um admittedly it was you know, this is 20 years ago nearly now, so it was basically um, using Microsoft Access to create a database with a program built on top of it. Um, and 
I still have a theory that my teacher lost some of my work, but that aside, I only got a C in my IT GCSE. Um, but I then went on to get um, very high marks in my national diploma in software development. Um, I then went straight into a foundation degree in applied computing, which was kind of the follow on. So I stayed at the college that I went to um, and they offered that, um, you know, it was sort of, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, it was given out by um, a university. So you, you ended up with, you know, an actual university foundation degree via the college. Then um, around that time, so this is 2009, uh, I got made redundant from the shop that I was kind of working part time in at the same time as I finished my foundation degree. So I just started looking for any full time job um, and I ended up working uh, admin in a law firm. Um, uh, I'll go into this stuff a little bit later, but basically I didn't do the top up for a few years until I actually ended up working in IT. Um, then uh, I realized that if I ever applied for an IT job, everybody applying would have uh, a degree probably. Um, whether or not that's correct uh, is is a different thing, but that was my idea. So I did a master's to try and set myself apart from um, other people's CVs, because that's kind of the, the first step, isn't it? Once you can talk to people, great, but you need something on your CV that will push you past potentially HR who don't really know necessarily unless they've been given you know strict terms on what's required um having something to get you past that initial barrier is great um then um the place that i worked at the time which was not a pen testing firm uh kindly paid for me to do the oscp uh so i got that in 2019 um and since working at bramfit um i've used our training budget to to get a great um a great extent um so um yeah i've now got to cross registered penetration tester um lots of certifications through altered security who i really i really like their sort of ethos and their courses um they're all i think pretty reasonably priced and um yeah you can pick up a lot of tools and techniques from them um I also did the uh, zero point security red team ops, which was really good. And um, I have the SANS G mob for mobile testing as well. Um, so now you know I have some certifications and you should listen to what I'm saying. Um, and sarcasm, probably. Um, so, uh, process list. Uh, yeah, so here's my career. Um, so I worked in admin at a law firm. Uh, then a legal secretary left, uh, the head of a department's legal secretary, and because I had taught myself to type really fast, um, I offered to do some of that work and then ended up um, getting promoted. Um, just as an aside, my desk that I had at home had a pull-out keyboard drawer and I never bothered pulling it out. I would just always type under there because I was lazy. Um, so I taught myself touch typing by um, laziness and applied laziness is a dangerous thing. Um, then I got made redundant from there um, and uh, went to work admin at another law firm um, and then was promoted to legal secretary again. Um, and then the uh, IT manager left um, and an IT tech got promoted to that position. So um, a role came up to be an IT technician, um, which I, I'd say applied for, but that's probably a strong use of words, mentioned that I would like and they gave to me. Um, you know, I'd proven that I was willing to, to work hard and, and put the effort in there. So hopefully they, they saw that and, um, and offered me that role. Um, so I did that for a couple of years and that's when I topped up my um, foundation degree to a degree. Um, and then, um, yeah, the, the IT manager left and I took his role and got to hire my own IT technician, um, which was nice. Um, and then at the back end of 2021, um, a recruiter contacted me on LinkedIn um, and said that he was uh, looking for somebody for a particular role. Um, and uh, yeah, I ended up uh, chatting with him and then with the team at uh, Bramfit and um, started there in January 2022. Um, and it's been the best job move I've ever done, I think. Um, I had 
Previously, uh, I think at the beginning of 2020, um, I'd been offered another pen testing role, but the time wasn't quite right. And it was when COVID was starting to kick in and I was kind of thinking about needing to try, you know, I'd have to get a train for it and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, it kind of didn't feel like the right time to take that at that time, as much as I was very excited at the prospect. Um, so yeah, that's something um, for people to think about if they are looking at a uh, changing role. Um, so my current role, um, when I started, I did, um, a lot of web applications and APIs, um, for anybody who isn't a pen tester and is looking to get into pen testing, um, it's a lot of fun, but sometimes you will get, um, an API test with three get requests that each have one, uh, <laughs> one item in them and um you know you, you do sometimes get kind of tick box exercises from companies where they just need to say it's been pen tested and really um th there's 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 probably nothing to be found there especially if it's you know something that's just been added to you or something like that but um still chuck everything at it um and hope that you do find something um sometimes something weird will crop up but yeah you do sometimes get those and then um it doesn't always help with the imposter syndrome which is uh which is rife in this industry i think i know that i constantly have imposter syndrome um but yeah web applications and apis um i found some fun things through there server side request forgery um lots of cross-site scripting still in this in this day and age um so yeah um that's fun and then as i said i have been working on mobile applications so android and ios um they're a lot of fun uh if anybody wants a recommendation for a cheap course to learn uh android app hacking um the uh android black belt course on udemy it's very good um learned a lot through there and the the guy who runs it is great and always responds to queries on the um the udemy forum as well which is good um and it's not super expensive especially if you can get it on a sale um infrastructure testing um before about six months ago i hadn't done loads of infrastructure testing just because of the type of work that we were getting in um but did manage to get a couple of tests in um didn't manage to get that domain admin that everybody wants on those couple of tests, unfortunately, but still a lot of good findings. Um, typically, as you as you, you know, people might expect people leaving passwords in files on open shares and that kind of thing that can uh, really cause you some trouble. Um, some cloud testing, so um, Azure and AWS. Um, and then for the last six months, um, I've been doing a lot of purple teaming. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, um, cause I don't know what everybody's background is, who's, who's listening. Um, you've got, um, red and blue team, which I think is taken from the U S army. So, um, red is a, a sort of attack and blue is defense. So blue is your security operations center, etc., And then red is kind of your offensive security people, pen testers. Um, so then purple teaming is bringing those two things together. Um, so in a, in a company that we do work for, uh, there's somebody who's kind of the blue side and I do the red side stuff. Um, and I, we have a, a joint console, um, called vector where I can put in what I'm doing. And then, um, the, the other guy can, um, look through the logs, see if stuff's picked up, see if stuff's alerted make a note on whether rules need to be changed, etc. And as a result of, um, you know, us doing that for the last six months, as well as the vulnerabilities that I've found that uh, have been remediated, um, you get a lot of new rules being added to the uh, monitoring and alerting software. Um, and I, I kind of think it's the future for an organization that's reached the level of, um, you know, maturity where they have that stuff set up and want to improve on it. Um, I've really found that it's, it seems to me like it's very beneficial for the company to add that stuff in. Um, so yeah, that's the, the kind of stuff that I do. Um, I know some people, um, or some sort of bigger pen testing companies might have people who are a dedicated, you know, web app or, um, infrastructure person. Um, but we tend to do a bit of everything. Um, there are people who are better at some stuff than others. Um, and you know, everybody's always willing to bounce ideas off each other. So if I ever spot something that I don't know, 
necessarily how to do, but I think there might be something there. There's a guide that I'll check with for kind of each um, each option. Um, so that's good. Um, okay, uh, future things that I will be doing. Um, I'm currently working my way through the Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester um, course. It is much harder than the OSCP. Well, the beginning of it, at least, you because you uh, it teaches you C sharp code and doing stuff like that. So um, and working with low level Windows APIs. Um, but I'm hoping that's the first step on doing the OSC three. Um, our company is currently working on um, Czech, so I'm hoping to be a Czech team member soon and eventually look at uh, being Czech team leader. Um, also, uh, with doing the purple teaming stuff. Um, and looking at more kind of bypasses and that kind of thing, um, hoping to create some custom tooling that we can use and, you know, bring some more value to the clients by, you know, maybe being able to get them to um, use more behavioral analysis and that kind of thing rather than just looking at file hashes or whatever, that, you know, that sort of um, that sort of difference and hopefully get better at everything that I do. Um, so for my final tips and takeaways, uh, keep learning and do things for yourself. Um, so whether that's setting up a home lab um, or, you know, uh, if you're not in a pen testing role, then looking at doing things like pen tester lab or hack the box or if you can afford um, to get any certifications yourself, then that's great just to get your foot in the door. Like I said earlier about me thinking that I needed to get the masters to get myself the uh just past the hr shield um anything that you can put on your cv that shows you additional um that shows that you have you know a, a good um sort of passion and interest in the field um and anything that you think can set you apart from somebody else um on that cv before you get the chance to speak to somebody um also uh if you are in the role or if you have somebody that you can speak to um about it seek feedback um so i try and seek feedback at work whenever i can um it's difficult because it sometimes feels like you're maybe looking for praise but that's that's not necessarily what it is um you know if i if i haven't been doing something well or if i can do something better then i want to be told that so that i can improve on it um Again, especially if you're not in a role, um, explore different areas, see what you're good at, what interests you and what you enjoy. Maybe you know that you want to be in cybersecurity, but aren't sure kind of which bit you want to be in. Um, I feel like, at least for me, uh, pen testing was very much the thing that I wanted to do. Um, I do think that maybe it can kind of look cool and flashy and maybe people think that they want to get into it and, and won't necessarily but there's there's so many different areas in cybersecurity um that you know it, it's good to look at a bunch of different things and and see yeah which things you enjoy the most um make a note of any new discoveries or techniques that you find um you know whether it's in a in a one note for yourself or whether you set up a blog or a github again going back to the cv thing if you can point to a blog or a github where you've uh, you've written down things that you found and that kind of thing um i started writing stuff on a blog and that's on my cv um i don't know whether anybody that i've applied to a job for has ever looked at it but it's there um and at least i know that i've done that work um you know to try and set myself apart a little bit um Practice soft skills like the communication, um, you know, as an idea, solve a box on hack, hack the box um, and write a report on it as if it was um, to a customer. Um, you know, obviously, this is if you're if you're not in the role, but um, I know that things like the OSCP and the um, the altered security courses, you have to write a report on those. But, um, you know, if you can't afford to, to, to do one of those certifications, then there are options for you to get that practice in. Um, you know, if you, if you want to write a report for a, for a hack the box box and, and I'm happy for you to send it to me and for me to have a look at, I'm not going to claim that I'm um, a hundred percent the best report writer in the world, but I think I'm, I could have a look at a report and, you know, give you some pointers if that's useful. Um, similarly, you know, post it to the blog or GitHub. Um, use LinkedIn. 
um like i said i got my job through linkedin so i know that some people struggle with it or whatever but if you're if you're writing those blogs or have that github and you post them to linkedin it might catch somebody's attention um and might get you through the door um and my final thing is remember the dunning kruger effect when dealing with imposter syndrome like i said i do have a bit of imposter syndrome but imposter syndrome tends to come when you know enough to know that you don't know everything um and that is the point where you can grow if you think you know everything you won't have imposter syndrome um so yeah that's probably one of my main takeaways if you are in a cyber security role is if you know that you don't know stuff, that's good, especially if you're willing to um, put the effort in to try to know that thing in the future. Um, a final thing which I haven't put on these uh, uh, bullet points is um, any if you're if you want to get into, you know, pen testing, for example, um, and uh, you aren't there yet, then as well as this stuff, um think about the things the other things that you enjoy doing and uh think about if you can spin those things to um to sort of point you in a direction of where you might want to go or things that could be beneficial to an employer so for example like i said i enjoy running silly long distances um but that means that i can take um a 24 hour exam and know that I have the ability to push on through when I'm tired and still be able to do, um, you know, a decent job at that. So that, that kind of thing, those parallels between other things that you do or enjoy doing and, um, where you want to end up. Um, and I think that is everything. Um, thank you everybody for listening. I hope that everybody got something from that. 